Oh, okay. This is our what is this? Our third Esperanto class. Our no, this, this fourth? Uh, our fourth Esperanto class. Wow, it is Ju July 2nd, and Dave Otten is leading us today. Go ahead, Dave, take it away. That's so what we really will do today is to go Donna. through... Excuse me, Donna, this is Simon. No, uh, you are calling this Esperanto lesson one, because there are five. This is number one. With, number with, one, because this was originally a correspondence course. Uh -huh. and that's how I began learning Esperanto many years ago, and so did Chuck and some other people. So I think this is a good, easy way to get into it because you actually start translations. Uh -huh. okay. So hopefully you've had a chance to read lesson one, and let's just go over a few things to review that it explains how single uh, subject nouns end in O, and um, plural subject nouns end in oi, uh, o ya. And then um, where, where single, all that? Which, page, which pages are you talking about? First, first page He's talking to this one. one. It says lesson one. Okay, all right. Very first page. Okay. So we're just going over what you learned. So single subject nouns end in o. Um, Plural subject nouns end in OJ, which is pronounced OI. And then, and then uh, object single nouns are uh, have an N on the end, ON, and plural object nouns have OJN, OIN. Okay, so that's how you can uh, remember that basic grammar. The beauty of Esperanto is that it's grammar coded. So you know that if a word ends in O, it's a noun. And then the simple verbs end in S with as for the present, is for the past, and os for the future. And then it gave you a simple vocabulary list that you would use in those 20 sentences that we'll get to. Let's just go through that list because you'll see that Many of them are very simple uh, since we are English speakers originally. So amico is, uh, should be easy to remember as a friend. Remember that the next one is pronounced beardo, not birdo, but beardo because of the I as the uh, where are you now? Excuse me, David, what are, where are you reading? I'm in He's the on upper, this list. upper right hand corner of the first page. I see vocabulary. Okay. Vocabulary. So we just went through amico and beardo. Then filo is son. Fisho is fish. That's easy. Frato is brother. So fratino would be sister. Remember the I N then is for the feminine. Insecto for insect. That's easy. Instruisto for a teacher, instructor. Cafo, cat. Coffee, caffeine, that's easy to remember. Canabo is a boy, so uh, canabino would be a girl. Then cuco is a cake. Lacto is milk, that's easy to remember, like to lactate. Pano is bread. Um, there is a, a, the bread company, which is Paneras, that's how I remember it. So pan is bread. Patro is father, so mother would be patrino. Sucero, sugar, that's very close to English. Teo for tea, and viro for a male, and so verino would be a female. So those are some basic nouns that we'll use in lesson one. Then for the verb roots, far for do or make, so for us, faris, feros. For Jess is to forget. That's close to English. Hob uh, is. Now, uh, please go back to uh, to make, and you then said some other words very fast. I didn't. Okay, catch. I did the present, the past, and the future. Would you so repeat very slowly for us? Okay, these are the verb roots. So then, all you have to do is add to these roots as if it's in the present time. I-S if it's in the past time, and O-S if it will be in the future time, okay? Uh -huh. So, for us would be to make now, 
Far East would be made, you already made it in the past, and Faros would be will make or will do. Okay, so we have our basic roots and we just add os, is, or os for our present, past, our future. And then for Jess is to forget. Forget. Um, for guess. Dave, I would like to suggest you put me as a subject in front of the verbs. I think that would help people. Me faras, me faris, me faros. So me havas, I have. Me havis, I had. And me havos, I will have. Okay? okay, just a minute, excuse me. Me, how do you spell me? M I, that means me. Uh -huh, I. I. He is I. Okay. So I have me havas. Okay. If I say I had me havis, I s at the end. Just a minute, slowly, please. Okay. So I have me um, ha havas. I have. Yes, havas. Uh, have havis. Okay. And then? Havis is had in the past. Had, Havis. Is is the past. Uh -huh. And Havos is in the future, will have. Okay. And all that we went over, that's in the first column on that same page where it says, pretty much below middle of the first column. Present tense, I, A, S added on to the root. Past tense, I, S added on to the root. And future tense, O, S added to the root. So after hav is copped, which is like capture or catch. So me- Where, where, are, where are you again, please, Dave? Um, going back to the vocabulary words again. Um, David, yes. would you like me to share the document on screen? So people can see it while you talk? Sure, if you'd like. Or Donna. Um, I can do it, yeah. Yeah, I'm not a host. Maybe you can make me a host or you can and, and Oh, they... I... Okay. I'll make you a host too. So this is where he is, back at the verbs over yeah. here. So now Cal you can all see what David is talking about. Okay, so we're in the vocabulary section for lesson one. And we went through the uh, simple nouns that have O as the end. And now we're going through the verb roots, which we're either adding os, is, or os to at the end. Wait, and slowly, here's that slowly, over slowly. here. Slowly. Here's uh, the os, is, and os over here. See, Simon, over here, os, is, and yeah. os is over here. What is that? Over on the left here, present tense, past tense, future tense. Can you see my cursor? Uh, I see. Uh. Now I began to see. Present time, os. I see. Okay. Os, is, os. Uh-huh. Okay. Let me okay. See. And then three left to go. A trink, a me, trink us would be I drink. Trink is very close to drink in English. And then... Me uh, drink ease would be I drank, and um, me drink os, drink os would be I will drink. Both drink ease. And then vend, to just think of a vending machine to sell something. Uh, me vendas, me vendis, me vendos. I sell, I sold, I will sell. Again, go over them slowly. You know, we are beginning at this, like, you know, elementary school. So, you are talking as if we are all experts. I'm not. Please. Okay. So, look at the vocabulary list again under the verb roots. Uh -huh. And the second last one is vend, V-E-N-D. So, yeah. that means to sell. Yes. So, if I add A-S on the end of vend, then it would be... I sell. I'm uh -huh. selling right now. That's the present time. Right. If I add IS onto Vend Vendis, then I sold it yesterday. I sold it in the past. Yes. And 
vend os, os on the end, is I will sell it tomorrow or in the future. Uh -huh. Okay. And then the same thing happens with the last one, deed. Well, think of video, seeing, vision. So, vidas, I see, vidis, I saw, vidos, I will see. Okay. So, Simon, could you do for us far again, do or make? What if you say, I do, right now in the present? Far, far, far as. Good. Bona. And then what if you uh, did something in the past? Far. Far is. Good. Bona. And then what about in the future? You will do something. Far os. Good. Okay. So you've got the main point. So once you learn the basic roots, um, then it's just a matter of the endings. And that's what makes Esperanto so simple. The other important thing um, on the next, uh, on the first page is pronunciation. And we've already gone over those, how to pronounce the basic vowels of a, e, i, o, u, and then uh, the special letters. So we did that already. At the bottom of the first page is word order. And so what those two pictures show is that all the sentences under the first uh, picture mean the same thing, where the man catches the fish. Vero is a man, Koptos uh, is catches, and fishon is the object. So that's why there's a letter N then, okay? A man ca cap catches a fish. And all those other sentences beneath that first picture then mean the same thing, regardless of where you put the words. Because of the endings, you know what caught what. But in the second picture, uh, Fisho Coptus Viron. And there you see that the fish caught the catches the man. And all those sentences below the second picture mean the same thing. Okay, does everyone understand that? That word order is flexible in Esperanto because of the endings. Okay. That, that, we could point out that is difficult for us because it's so different from English. <laughs> English, we depend very much on word order. In Esperanto, you have to pay attention to the endings of the word. Now, as English speaker speaking people, uh, I personally find it easier to use that kind of word order that we would in English. So I would I would per, uh, prefer the first sentence, um, "Viro captus fishon" for the man catches the fish. But um, any of those would be proper. Okay. Then uh, Leo has a question. I think Leo's hand was up. Okay, why, Leo? Is it, why isn't the second sentence on the left, Fisho and Kaptas Vera, why is, does not, why doesn't that end in an N? Because Vero is the subject, he's doing the catching. It's the fish that is being caught. The fish is the object under that picture. So the difference between the first two sentences is simply switching around the subject and the object but the meaning is the same. That's the point, is that um, because we have the N on fish, we know it's an object. Because we do not have an N on Vero, we know it's a subject. Does that make sense, Leah? Yeah. Okay, so that's the point, is that because of the endings, word order can be flexible, where that wouldn't be obvious in English. Um, okay, I, then on this, if we go to ask a question which uh, you may have, you, all of you have mastered except me, uh, a little bit earlier on this second column of the first page, um, the uh, pro pronouncement again, and then the, uh, the uh, uh, sound. Uh, if you can go over, over, you know, above the word order, those are <laughs> okay. S and SH, 
could you go over that slowly for me to, to, to uh, uh, impress me and understand it? Sure. If you have the letter S without a circumflex or a hat on top, then it's just like S in English should be saw. But if you have S with a circumflex or a hat on top of the S, then it's the SH sound in English. Shaw. Okay. And yeah. then below the vowels, A, E, E, O, U, pronounced like palm, there, three, glory, and two, it says this letter C is the T, S sound. S. Where is the letter C here? Underneath palm, there, three, glory, two. I see. C pronounce, is... pronounce the C like a T-S. Pronounce the O-J like an O-Y, oi. Pronounce the G like a G in English. Uh, K-N has to be pronounced separately, like Canabo. Okay, Canabo is a boy. Now, I have a question about the material because this is kind of contradicting what we've seen before because before it said the A is like in father, whereas the A in palm has m much more of an O component to it. Yeah, I think it's just a matter of what examples they use, but it, the point is it's uh, an A ah sound, not an A oh, wow. sound. It's, it's a sh what in English we would call a short A, not a long A. It's A, ah, not A. Okay. All right, then let's uh, go to the second page of the lesson, and that was simply uh, a way in which the, they start to get you to do the pronounce of the translations. And so you see the answers uh, right on the top of the second column. So hopefully you've all had a chance to go over that. Uh, is there any need to go over those together right now? Yes, please. Well, uh, okay, so look at the first sentence that they give under study guide. <laughs> See, number one, the friend will sell milk. I'm now, sure. the friend, the, the, okay, just a minute. The, the friend, it's the, it's the you friend. see on the screen, it's in blue. Well, so Simon? Simon, yes. look at the screen. Uh, it's in blue, a blue box. Yeah. The friend will sell milk. Okay. So who is doing the selling? The friend. So we know friend is a um, subject. Mm -hmm. Now, which friend? The friend. So we need a la. Uh -huh. Anytime it's the, we need la. And then remember, sell is vend, V-E-N-D but it's in the future. So we need an OS, vendos, and then milk is lacto, but we have to put an N on the end to make sure we know it's the object of the sentence. So the answer is right there in the second column, Simon. See that in the bo blue box? Uh. You would say, la amico vendos lacton. And that would be the friend will sell milk. Okay? Okay. Then go to the second sentence on the left. Mother drinks coffee with milk and sugar. So father is patro. So mother is patrino. Remember we put the I-N for the feminine before the O. And then a uh, drink is trink with a T sound, uh, and coffee is kafo, so that is the object. That's what she is drinking. So the subject of the sentence is mother, but it doesn't say the mother, it just says mother. So patrino trinkas, because she's drinking right now in the present, kafo is the is coffee but we need an n on the end because it's the object and then it tells you that kun k-u-n means with and lacto um 
is milk and Kai is an, K-A-J is pronounced Kai and Sukero is sugar. So we don't need ends on the end of lacto or sucero because we've got the preposition kun. So if you see what's in the blue box for number two, that would be how to say mother drinks coffee with milk and sugar in Esperanto. Leo, did you have a question? Why don't you uh, put la in front of mother? Because it's not the mother, it's simply mother. Oh. Mm -hmm. So we only <laughs> use la when it's specifically the something. Okay. Okay. Then look at the third example on the left. The teachers forgot this, uh, the T. So notice in that sentence, we have two does. So we're gonna need two laws in sentence three. And uh, who's doing the forgetting? Teachers. So teachers are the subject of the sentence and notice that there's more than one teacher, so it's plural. So we're gonna have an oi sound. And forgot is in the past, so we're gonna have an is sound at the end, or forgot. Then t, uh, t is tea, so we're gonna need an n on the end of tail for teon. So if you look at the answer then in the blue box on the right, La instruistoi, so the oi says there's more than one instructor or teacher, there are several. The teachers are Jesse's. They forgot. The is at the end shows it's in the past, and la teon means the t. Is everybody okay with number the third example? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, then let's go to the fourth example on the left. The boy. I have a question about Taeon. Is it Taeon or t is that A Taeon? It, it, what's the sound te, of the E? Te, e. Sharp. Uh, te, te, teon. Te. 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 Taeon. Te. Te. Taeon. Okay. Taeon. Okay, thanks. And then number four, the boys will make the cake. So again, in this sentence, we have two thes. So Leo, we're gonna need two laws, okay? And we know the subject is boys. They're the ones who are doing the making. And will make is in the future. So we know we're gonna to have to have an OS on the end of the verb. And cake is what they are making. So we're gonna need an N on the end of uh, cuco. Okay, to show that that's what they're making. So mm -hmm. if you look at the answer on number four on the right, la canaboy, uh, faros, la cucon. Wow. So that shows you the boys, o oi is plural, uh, faros is will make the cake. Any questions about that one? Okay, then let's go to number five on the left. Um, how would you translate the Esperanto sentence now going into English? Um, la cana, uh, canabinoi, so there we know that uh, in is feminine and oi is plural. The girls. The girls. Girls. And vitos is future, we'll see. We'll see. And the instruisto. <laughs> So we need an end on the end of instruistone to show uh, that uh, that's the object that the girls are seeing. So if you look at the answer for number five, the girls will see the teacher. So it has to be the teacher because it's lot instruistone. Teacher. Okay. Teacher did see. The instructor, the instruistone. Teacher saw the girls, yeah. Yeah, so. We'll see, we'll see. So we do not no. Oh, the next one. Oh, he's on the next one, one I see. Right, well, so number well, six. What is well here again in, in uh, uh, Esperanto? Well see, well, vidos? Vidos, right. Ah. Just think of video. So vid is see and os is will see. 
Number six on the left, how will you translate that into English? La instruisto teacher. la canabinoin. So we know that instruisto is the subject noun, the teacher. Bidis is saw, the past of the sea. And la canabinoin would be the girls. So we have the I-N for feminine, the O, a Y for plural, and the N for the object. Enoin means all that together, okay? Canabinoin. Canabinoin uh, meaning girls, does it? The uh, girls, but they are, it's plural and it's the object. Uh, That's why you have to have uh, that's why it has the I-N-O-J-N for the ending. Okay, then let's uh, finish this and then get on to the 20 sentences. Number seven, la philoi, as soon as we see the O-J, we know that it's plural. Trinkas, as soon as we see the A-S, we know that's in the present tense for the verb. Peon. We know that's T and it's the object. Sen lacto, lacto. Sen, it says, is without. So if you look at the answer on the right, the sons, la is the, sons is philo, but it's plural, so it's philoi. They're drinking tea in the present, so it's trinkas. Teon, that's what they're drinking, so we need an N on the end of T-E-O for Teon. And then Sen is without, Sen Lacto, without milk. Okay? And number eight. Can I, can I ask a question? Sure. Why is it, uh, uh, why is it Lacto, Lactone? It's the object of a preposition. Right. Um, there you do not need an N, only need it on the object. You don't need it, the N with prepositions. Uh, Ron, do you have an, a reason for that? No. It was part of the reason is that sometimes you do want to put an N on the object of a preposition to change the meaning. So N chambro would mean in a room, N chambrone would mean into the room. So in some cases, you will have an N, but it tells you that the preposition has a different meaning. Okay, but in this particular case, we don't need the N on lacto. That's right. Um, one way that I started thinking about this that I think captures a lot about when you use the N in Esperanto and when you don't, is the idea of the target of the action. So the T is the target, it is what is being drunk. And then without milk, well, that's just extra information. That's not the target of the action. And the reason I'm saying target of the action and not just direct object is because it captures those movement cases that Ron mentioned. And I'm gonna talk a lot more about that next week. Okay. And then number eight, la beardoi vitus La insectoin. So we have la, so it has to be the. We have oi for beard. So birds. we know there's more than one bird. Birds. Uh, the birds. And we have is for vidis. So it's in the past tense. They saw la, the, insectoin. So that would be the Thanks. plural object. Insecto is singular. We need a J on the end for plural. We need an N on the end for object, insectoin. That's what the birds saw. So once you went over those basic examples, 
then you get the point of how to continue with that pattern and we'll do that with the 20 sentences. On the rest of the second page, we've already gone over counting and at the very bottom it has the color words. So those will come up later on. Dave, can I interrupt just for a moment? Sure. You've been doing an excellent job of explaining everything, but there's a problem in the lesson itself. Look at number six. La instaristo vidis la cannabinoin. What would happen if you did not have those two laws in there? How would you translate instaristo vidis cannabinoin? I would How say- would you translate that into English? And it but, has to but, do with the fact that in Esperanto, there's no indefinite article. But in English, there is an indefinite article. And that's what makes it complicated for English speakers. When there's no article, when there's no definite article, well, what do we do? Well, it depends on the English. Is it good English to say an instructor? Yes. So an instructor saw the girls, if there's no the, an instructor saw girls. So you just leave out the the, and in English, we don't have an indefinite article, although the word some sometimes would work in there. But the point is, in Esperanto, there is no definite article. In English, sometimes we have an indefinite article, but in Esperanto, there are no indefinite articles. And for now though, we're just going through basic sentences just to learn the difference. Right. So let's go through those 20 sentences on the third page then. And uh, let's just take turns uh, where someone will uh, uh, give the Esperanto uh, translation. So Donna, let's, let me pick on you first. How would you say in Esperanto, father makes a cake? Patro Faras. Kukan. Bona. Everyone agree? Kukan means uh, the diff instead of Kuko, Y N again. Why because was it? It, it is what it's the, the object. Object. It's the what object. The father makes. The father makes what? If you can ask that question, what is the father making? The cake, a cake, then it needs an N on the end. So who's doing the making? The father. So no N on Patro, it's just Patro Faris Kukon. Okay, father makes a cake. If you put it without the N, what does it mean in English? It wouldn't uh, make sense because it's, it's an object. Um, if, you, if you say Patro Estas Kuko, father is a cake, that wouldn't make sense. I see. But if you say father makes a cake, Patro Faris Kukon. The N on the of Kuko makes it what he made. Okay? I see. Number two, um, uh, what about um, uh, Bharat? The boy will have the sugar. <laughs> yeah, I, I am a little embarrassed because okay, then I let's haven't really it. gone through it. So that, that's fine. I, I, under I, I'm, I understand the logic completely of present, past, you know, future, but I, I don't have the words for the nouns, what That's they fine. are. That's okay, fine. So, so I'll Leo, Leo, can you do number two? Yeah, la cannabo habos la cucon. Well, it's sugar. <laughs> it's uh, sucaron. Sucaron. Oh, I was, I was like in that cake. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, the boy will have the sugar. So notice in number two, you have two laws because it says the twice. Which boy? The boy. Which sugar? The sugar. So you mean specific nouns. So you need la for the, okay? So how do you uh, do that eventually? La canabo. La canabo, 
That's the uh, boy. Yeah, and have is for have, so it's havos for will have. La sucaron. Sucaro is sugar, so you need a letter N on the end to show what the boys will have. My goodness. Okay. Then number three, uh, the son forgot the milk. So notice that forgot is in the past tense. So we need is on the end of the verb. Uh, who do we have uh, that has done these that wants to take number three? Actually, number three. But la, la filo forgesses la lacto. Bona. So everybody agree with that? Yeah. Filo, filo is son. Forgesis is past tense for forget, and the milk, la, la lactone. All right? Should I keep, is it helpful right. for, if I keep sharing this screen or can I stop sharing? Do people need me to share the screen still? No. Yes, okay. Help. Yeah, in case Okay, okay, just, just check in. vocabulary up, the vocabulary. Okay, number four. Oh, <laughs> I can't show both. No. Yeah, you'll have to keep calling on us because we can only see like three or four people at a time. Right. And, uh, okay. Number four, the boys. So we know we have a plural subject noun. They drink tea. So what, what would that be for number four? Uh, canoy. La, oh, can I, the, can I, the, the, la. La, la, la boy. Trinkos, Or you have what letter? Right, number boy. four. La uh, boy, Trinkos, Teon. Yeah, after Knabo, uh, Knab hyphen O, and then after O, what letter? No, no hyphen. It's no just hyphen. No? Okay. La Knaboy, K. Now, this is O, how do you pro I'm, I'm a little bit, uh, you know, not clear. Okay, Simon, Kanabo is singular boy, I but see. the sentence is the boy, so we need to do plural for boy, so we need a J on the end. Got you, got you. Got La you. Trinkas Town. Trink. Okay. Trink. So we're up to number four. Everybody okay so far? So yeah. Trink Teo. Is it Teo? Te, uh, teon. T E O and -E 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 T, -E -E and then we need a we need a N on the end. T E O N to make it what uh, the to make it the object. It's what the boys are drinking. If you say the boys are drinking what, it's T. So that's why we need an N on the end of T. Okay, um, and as we go through this, you'll see uh, again the pattern of subject, verb, object. The question is whether we need la for the or not, and also the verb tense will change. So number five, the friend sold the bread. So we've got two uh, thes in there. Uh, shall I try that? La amico sure. vend pano, but uh, I have to correct the tense, etc., which I am not good at. I've, okay. I've learned. So la amico, uh, la amico, la la amico, uh, la, la amico, la so amico. Then they sell. Uh, how is uh, sold? Vendi, vendi, i n v n d i n. No, v i n v e n d i s. So i s is the past verb. Aha. So, vend is the root of the verb vend. Vend is, V E N D I S, uh -huh. would be sold. It's to sell in the past. So, they sold it. They sold what? La panon. So, pano is bread, but we have to put an N on the end of pano to show what they sold. Okay? La amico vendis la panon. All right, number six, the teacher sees a boy. So we have a specific teacher, but not a specific boy. So La what would number Cristo. six be? Is it uh, La Cristo? The teacher. 
La Intuisto Vidas Canabon. Canabon. La Intuisto Vidas Canabon. Right. But Instruisto, remember the S in there, Instruisto, just like instructor. In, oh, uh, Instruisto. I wrote it but didn't say it. Right. <laughs> Sorry. So the teacher, La Instruisto, sees, Instruisto. sees in the presence. So that's just Vidas, that's simple. And Canabo is boy, but it's what the teacher saw. Uh, so, or who the teacher saw. So we have to put an N on the end. The boy is the object of the sentence. Now, we do not have la canabon because it's not the boy, it's a boy. So we don't need any word in there for a. Okay? La instruisto vidas canabon. Everybody understand number six? Uh, yeah. All right, number seven. The son has a friend. So again, la amico. No, you don't need the la. The son has amico. For correct, la filo filo is son. La filo havas amicon. Havas h a v and then a s. H A V A S for has, because it's in the present. It's the son, la filo, havis amikon. So you need an N on the end of amiko, because it's a friend. But no la before amikon. It's just a friend. Ah, okay? I see. Ah. La so number seven again, la filo, the son, havas, has, a friend, amikon. Okay? Wow. Num number eight, the brother made bread. So we know brother's the subject, but it's a particular brother, so we need la, and made is in the past. So how would number eight be? What would number eight be in Esperanto? If, if. Bob, how about you? Bob, you Bob, Bob, Bob Hurdy, Bob. I myself. Okay, number eight. Eight, eight. La Frato Faris Pano. Pano. Everybody have that? Yeah. Understand that? Yep. Okay. Number nine, the boys. So we have a plural subject and we need la for the. We'll have cake. So... On the end of have, we need OS for future. And cake, we do not need la. So what would number nine be in Esperanto, Donna? La canaboy habos kukan. Bona. Everybody understand number nine? After, canab, after O of canab, you, do, you put what letter? A J for the J. old tongue. Because it's boys. Uh -huh. Because it's plural. La canaboy, habos kukon. Habos, I S was again, let's see, the boys will, will. Will have, so it's O S. H A V O S. Habos. Uh -huh. O S. Will have. Will have. Habos. Okay? Yes. Num number 10. Father forgot the sugar. So remember the. What would that be, uh, Leo? Patro forgesis Allah sukaran. Bona. Everybody understand that? Let, let's see. We'll start yep. with the beginning. The father, meaning. Father. Is patro. Patro. Uh, forgesis. <laughs> is forgot. I S at the end means in the past. And ah, I see after F O R G E S I S. Correct. I and see. then the sugar, so you need la sukaron. And because sugar is the subject, it's what the father forgot, you need an N on the end of sukaro. So sukaron. Patro forgesis la sukaron. Okay. So we're halfway through. If everybody understands the first 10, you see the pattern. Now we continue with the different variations. Number 11, the boys had 
friends. So had is in the past and friends is plural and it's an object. So number 11, who would like to do that? Okay, Donna. La Knaboy Havis Amikoin. Bona. So that's, uh, yeah, you got everything correct. Any uh, one not understand 11? Okay, uh, Simon, you see yeah, it? All right, I'm beginning to learn, yeah. Good. It follows the same pattern. Once you catch on, it gets uh, very, uh, it gets easier. Number 12, the sons, so we have the, saw the bread. So we the have- is L-A, is that? L-A, for, 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 for the, is it? La, yes, yes. L-A, la. Okay. So sons is plural. So what would that be then, Leo? La filoi bidis la panon. Good, everybody uh, understand 12? No, fi, fi, uh, sons, what, where is the S coming in philo? Uh, it's not. Okay. La philoi, F-I-L-O is son, so you put a J on the end. To make it, it sounds. But it makes an oi sound. O-J is pronounced oi. La philoi vidis la panon. Okay? Yes. The sons saw the bread. Number 13, the brothers sell future, uh, sell sugar. So they're selling it in the present. So what would number 13 then be, Bob? La fratoi vendas sukeron. Good, bona. So it's the, the brothers, so it has to be plural, fratoi. If I understand 13? Uh-huh. Okay. And the sugar is sukaron at and at the end? And at the end because that's what they sell. It's the object of the sentence. The brothers are the subject, sugar is the object. Okay. Then number 14, the teacher forgets the boy. So there we have the twice. So we need two laws. So Donna, what would number 14 be? La instruisto for gesas la canabon. Uh, for gesas. So for gesas, sorry. Yeah, for gesas. There's, there's no hat on the end, on the top of that. Yeah. La for gesas, sorry. For gesas la canabo, uh, uh, canabon. For gesas. La canabon. F-O-R-G-E-S and then? F-O-R-G-E-S-A-S. Because A-S. It's in present tense. It's in it right happening right now. The teacher is forgetting right now the boy. Okay, 15, the friend will drink milk. So we have the, so we need a law, and we have future, will drink. So, Leo, what would 15 be? La amico trincas lactone. Trincos lactone, good. Everybody agree on 15? Yep. Os meaning will, is that right? Yes. Yeah, trinkos, O-S means in the future, so will drink. Yes. Number 16, the sons are making cakes. So you know it's present, they're making it, they're making cakes right now, but cakes are plural and the object. And sons are plural. So how would you say 16, Bob? La filoi faras kukoi. Good. Bonus. So, kukoin is K-U-K-O, that's cake, but you need a J for plural and N for the object, kukoin. Uh, 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 so, it spells K-U-K-O and then? J-N. J-N. K-U-K-O-J would make cakes, but it's the object of the sentence, so you need an N on the end. Kukoin. I see. J is the plural and kukoin is the... the J is the plural of the noun and N makes it an object noun. Okay? So the subject is the sons and the object are is the cakes. Okay, just a few more. Number 17. Father will sell 
the cake. So we'll sell us in the future. So Leo, what do we have there? Uh, Patro Vendos La Cucon. Good. Everybody see that? Yep. Okay. Number 18, the friend had bread. So had is in the past tense. So we need is, I-S on the end of the verb. So uh, Donna, what do we have for 18? La Amico Havis Panon. Panon, good. Bona. Number 19, the boys will see the teachers. So notice we have a plural subject, boys. We'll see is future. The teachers is a plural object. So Bob, what would number 19 be? La canavoy vidos la in um, instruistoin. Very good. Yeah, that's a tough one. Instruistoin. So the OJN. OJN. OJN means plural object. So la canavoy is the boys. There you do not put an N because the boys is the subject of the sentence. They're, they're the ones who will see. And one more, number 20. The teachers, we know that's the subject. What do they do? They drink right now in the present. What do they drink? Coffee. So Leo, what would 20 be? Okay, it'd be trinkas. Because they're doing the drinking right now, not in the past. Oh, ah, okay. So, la instruistoi, trinkas kafon. So you need an N on the end of kafo because that's what they're drinking right now. Okay? So, uh, the importance of lesson one in this series is it gets you thinking in the pattern of subject, verb, object, singular, plural, past, present, and future, and also whether you need la for the or not. So we just use 20 uh, examples then to get those points across. Is there anyone now who has, who has any questions about any of those 20 sentences? And so any of these, we really could uh, mix around the words, like number 16, we could say kukoin faras la filoi, just as well? Yes. To make an emphasis maybe that they're making cakes and not making bread or something. Right. So as long as you have the proper endings, remember the word order is not important as it is in English. But just to get going in this, we've been following the traditional English pattern of subject, verb, object, of something does something to something else. Okay, if uh, no one has any questions about those 20 sentences, if everybody sees the pattern, then uh, you can continue on with lesson two, which uh, Jane will lead us in next week. Jane? Yes, and what I'd like everybody to do before lesson two is not so much the lesson itself, we'll talk about that together, but, um, Lesson one has a vocabulary box, and lesson two has a vocabulary box. And what I'd like you to do is practice those words. Flashcards are a good idea. You can use just three by five cards, or you can do electronic ones, whatever you like. But I'm going to add two, and I'm going to take off one. So one stem is L-E-I-N to learn, and I'm putting that in the chat. And another word, another that comes up in lesson two, but is not in the vocabulary box, is S. To be and skip or don't bother with B 
Butico. And you'll see why I'm saying that next time. So those two boxes with these changes. So um, adding two verbs and subtracting one now. Uh, Ron or Chuck, do you have anything to add about um, how beginners should continue? We can't uh, hear you, Ron. You're on mute. Ron, you're on mute. Okay, now um, I think you're doing an excellent job of going through the exercises and pointing out the different things. The place that I think is going to be most difficult for people is not because Esperanto is complicated, but because English is complicated. And especially with the indefinite article in English. Sometimes it's there and sometimes it isn't. When we sang our song, Uja Pomo, then the second verse, um, Estes Pomo, Estes Fructo. How would you translate that into English? Well, an apple is a fruit. You have to put the indefinite article in, in order for it to make good sense in English. And by the way, that's extremely difficult for people who come from languages that don't have articles. Um, yeah. My family has been here 30 years. Um, my parents mostly know English quite well. But because the Russian doesn't have articles, they still struggle with which one to use and when do you use them. It's a difficult idea if you don't absorb it. Right. Chuck, did you have anything uh, as far as advice to beginners? Have to unmute. <laughs> unmute, Chuck. We can't hear you, Chuck. Chuck, you're on mute. Chuck, Chuck, Chuck. Okay. Chuck, can you hear me? I don't think he can hear us. Can he see? He's looking up, so I don't think. Okay. All right, well, that's our time today. So make sure that uh, you would uh, study lesson two for Jane next Thursday. Yeah, just study uh, the vocabulary and make sure to add in. Uh, can I ask a and S. Sorry, okay. Simon? Yeah. Uh, Donna, you sent us uh, the day before uh, yesterday uh, the summary of what was going on today. Will you be doing the same next Wednesday? Yes, actually after today I'll send out an email to everybody with Jane's instructions for maybe Jane could help make sure I get it right about what the homework sure. is. And um, I'll send it out and then I'll, I'll try to remember to send a reminder the day ahead of time too. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. And thank sure. you. You're Dave welcome. For the wonderful uh, teaching and Ron and everybody else. Bye. Uh, like Bye. Learning. Have a yeah. wonderful Bye. week. Bye. Let's see you next week. Okay. Thank you, Chuck. everyone. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. Chuck, we Chuck, we haven't been able to hear you. Are you there, Chuck? Oh, he hung up. Oh well. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> uh, and Ron, I'm not.